Our scripture this morning is from the third and fourth chapters of James. My Bible entitles this, Two Kinds of Wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds, done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask for God, ask of God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Here in the our reading. So as we continue in our study in the book of James this week, we are again challenged by James to examine how we are living our lives. Now he's already called us to tame our tongues and to make sure that we are living our lives of faith, backed up by our actions. And in the scripture for this week, we find James calling us to make sure that we are allowing ourselves, to make sure we are not allowing ourselves to be full of envy. In the start of chapter 4, James calls us to think about how envy is the cause of fighting among our people, that we kill because of envy, that we fight and quarrel because of the things that we do not have. Now you may be thinking to yourself, that sounds a bit extreme. Sure, I might envy my neighbor and what they have, but I'm not going to kill them over it. And you are right, most of us are not willing to kill because we are envious of what someone else has and we do not. However, I want you to consider this. What are most wars fought over? Is it always that they are fought over a difference in beliefs? Are they fought over different political systems that are rubbing up against each other and causing issues between those countries? Or are they fought because of envy? Well, we need look no further than the conflict that is going on in the Ukraine right now to see the answer to this question. It is not some high-minded fight over different ideologies. No, this is a war that is being fought because the Russian ruling class wants the territories that are part of the Ukraine. This war is essentially being fought because those people and the Russian leadership are envious of what the Ukrainians have. You see, envy, when it takes its most extreme form, it can indeed lead to the killing of others. When we look at the scriptures, we see the first murder that occurs when Cain kills Abel. Now, why does he kill him? Cain was envious of how God favored Abel after Abel made a good and proper sacrifice to God. Now again, I know that we are not the sort of people that are willing to go out and kill because we are envious of what our neighbors have. However, when we allow ourselves to be envious, when we fixate on how it is so unfair that someone has something that we do not, we do allow ourselves to kill possibilities. See, it is very difficult 
for us to find a way to love someone when we are envious of them. If you find yourself being jealous of the way someone is living, if all you can think about is, oh, I can't believe they have that big house, or that nice car, or all those wonderful collectible action figures. All right, that last one was just for the nerds in the group. <laughs> but if you can't get past how much you are jealous of that person, because envy and jealousy go hand in hand, if you can't get past how jealous you are of a person, how are you ever going to be able to offer them the love of Jesus Christ? See, it is nearly impossible for us to be envious of someone and also love them enough to share the gospel of Jesus with them. Think of it this way. If you are jealous of someone and all that they have, are you going to say, you know what? I want some more really good things to happen to that person. Even better, I want the best thing that could ever happen to that person to happen to them. I want them to accept Jesus as their savior. No, people do not work that way and neither does jealousy. See, when we are jealous of someone, you don't hope for more good stuff to happen to them. You want bad stuff to happen to them. You want them to be brought down to a lower level. You don't want them to find Jesus because he is for you, not for them, and they already have so much. <clears throat> this is a toxic way of thinking. Brothers and sisters, we cannot allow ourselves to be envious of others. Now, besides killing possibilities for us, envy also has to be one of the most useless emotions that we can have as a people. What do we gain by being envious of anyone? Think about it this way. If I look at my neighbor and think about, oh man, I wish I had that house. Does that help me gain that house in any way? Does wanting others to have what others have and complaining about it make me gain what they have. No, it does nothing but make me miserable. See, there is no action to improve behind envy. It is just an empty excuse to covet what others have. But let me tell you a story about when I was envious of others. When we first moved to Lewistown before school started, I went to a place that I had noticed as we were driving through the town, had a soccer goal just kind of sitting there. And my intentions were to just go and practice, and uh, that way I'd be better prepared for when the season started. And I had been a pretty good player in Oklahoma, and I was sure I was going to be a good player in Pennsylvania. And after about 30 minutes of just kicking the ball around, two other guys showed up. And they had the same idea that I did. They were there just to practice to get ready for the season. Now, one of these guys was a head taller than I was. And the other guy looked like he had been lifting weights since about the age of two. So I kicked the ball around with them a little bit, and I realized, hey, these guys are pretty good. You know what? I bet they're probably already on the team. They're both so much bigger than I am. You know, they're probably seniors, right? So in talking with them and kind of getting to know them, I asked, hey, how old are you guys anyways? And my heart sank when they told me they were going into the ninth grade just like I was. See, they were the same age as I was. And I thought, how will I ever compete with them? They're so much bigger and stronger than me, and they might be just as skilled as I am. It was the first time in my life that it really dawned on me that I was not overly gifted physically. And I was just so envious of both of those guys, one for how strong he is, the other for the size that he was born with. But in the end, it really didn't matter. My envy did nothing to push me further. And we all actually made the varsity team anyways. But that envy that I had of them, it didn't make me work harder. It didn't make me do anything but feel miserable about being who I was. You see, envy of that kind is just useless. So how then do we overcome envy? How do we stop ourselves from feeling those feelings? How do we stop ourselves from falling into the trap of wanting what others have? Well, the first thing we must do is we must learn to be content with what we have. We have to be willing to say to ourselves, 
You know, I might not have the greatest or the best or the newest, whatever it may be, but I do have what I need. See, we have to instill in ourselves feelings of gratitude for the things that we do have. Now, we have gotten very good as Christians in asking God for things. And indeed, he does tell us to come with him, with our, to him with our request. But we've almost come into this sort of mentality when praying, Lord, please, I need this. Lord, please, I need that. Lord, if you just give me this one thing, then I'll be yours forever. God is not Santa Claus. What we have let go by the wayside, by and large, is being grateful for what he has provided for us. Lord, thank you for the roof over my head. Lord, thank you for the food that you have provided. Lord, thank you for the love of my family. You see, we have to change our mindset as a people from one that is always wanting more to the people that are grateful for the things they already have. And I promise that if you begin to live your life being thankful for what you do have, it will be very hard for you to fall into the trap of envy. See, we do not fall into the trap of envy because being grateful kills envy. Now, does being grateful mean that we are to stop striving to do better? No, absolutely not. We still want to grow as Christians. We still want to continue to do our best. See, being content doesn't mean that you have to stay in the same spot or that you never grow as a person. It means that you can look around and see what you already have and just be thankful for those things. Now, when you are truly content, you can even be thankful for what others have. You can say things like, Lord, thank you for blessing that person. Thank you for providing for them as well as for me. Thank you for giving your love to all of us. That is the level of contentment that I think we should be striving for. Finally, I will leave you with this thought for today. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have allowed him into your heart, if you've all, then you have already been given the greatest gift that anyone could ever receive. You see, you have already been assured of your everlasting life in heaven with Christ. And if that is the case, what else could someone have in this world that you could possibly be envious of? There is nothing in this world that can possibly compare with the gift that Jesus has already freely given to you. So the next time you feel yourself going down that road of envy, I want you to stop and remember that you have already been given the greatest blessing that this world has ever known. Now, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior and you are tired of living in a world of envy, well, I encourage you to leave that behind today. I'd love to talk to you more about it. If you're not sure how to take those steps, I'd love to talk to you about it. My challenge for you this week is this. I want you to take time to name five things that you're grateful for that the Lord has given to you. And I want you to do that each day this week. And see if your envy of others starts to go away.